So I started flamenco about 11 years ago, is when I was living in Madrid. I went to a tablao, Las Tablas, which is still open, and saw flamenco and just felt, I have to do this. This is the way I'm going to express myself. <laughs> First Maestros, uh, I started off at Flamenco Vivo uh, for one of their short sessions and so Leslie Roybal was my first teacher, teacher, um, and then Juana Cala took over for her when she took a leave for a little bit. And then I guess from there it was a funny moment in class, the session was ending and Connie, she passed away, um, but she was a female guitarist in New York, and she called me over and she said if you want to keep doing this you have to study with a man. So she recommended Victorio Corjan, who still lives in the city, still a great teacher, and he has a ballet background, but really fell into flamenco as well in his 20s. Um, and I started with him. I would say he's my first maestro. And then right after him, I was with La Magdalena, who has moved from the city, but she really taught me a lot about that connection with the cante and what a palo means and how a dance is structured. And I got my form, I think, from Victoria. <laughs> My style of flamenco is a, is a mixture of all the teachers that I've had. So I think I see my lines very classically because Victorio was a trained ballet dancer. So from him, I've gotten that and just my silhouette. But then right when I moved to Spain, I started studying with Carmen Edesma. And so I get her just brute force and ability to close your body like this and really feel the emotions and not always just be upright and very classical in that sense. Um, so she probably got me to like break my body a little bit to add a little touch. And then I, I've gotten a really inspired from Marco Flores, um, I guess to like encapsulate the trinity of my style of a modern look. So separating some of my fingers, um, using my hips more, um, the way I move my body in between like a feminine and a masculine way. Um, and looking for those mixtures. So I think I have, a, I have a respect and a reverence for the classical style and what that traditional looks like while also recognizing I'm a body and a man in 2019 and I don't need to nor can I dance the exact same way that people used to dance in 1930. Um, I think that'd be an unrealistic expectation. So yeah, respecting the past while adding something new to the future. My go-to palos, I think for performance, like most dancers, are Alegrías uh, and then Cientos Tangos. Um, and both for different reasons. And I think, I think whether I'm happy or I'm sad or whether I'm feeling a certain way in any day, you can dance either. So if I'm really, really sad and looking for that boost of happiness, then I'll go head first into an Alegrías and just sort of fake it till you make it. Um, or if I'm really, really unhappy and I really want to express that pain and that suffering, then I'll go straight to a tangos, or a tientos. Um, or on the flip side, if I'm really, really happy and want to express it, I go to alegrías. Or if I want to look deeper for that day and, and express something I haven't been feeling, then I'll go to a tientos. Um, but I'm really excited lately by like Solia por uh, I've done a caña, which I really enjoy that. And most recently I've started getting into a farruca. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how the farruca, being such a masculine dance, or traditionally masculine, fits on my body. What's it like to do a farruca in a bata de cola? Um, and yeah. My, my bata journey, if we were to call it that, really started in 2011. Um, and I've always looked at it in this point of view of, like there's the theoretical and there's the academic side that I approach flamenco, and then the practical artistic side. And over the years I've tried to merge those two more and more, but I started studying Bata de Gola with Lachoni in Sevilla um, 
mostly to research and study because I was doing research on the masculine and the feminine within flamenco and the, the baile de mujer, the baile de hombre, the man and female style of dancing. And so I just took it as like an ethnographic project of if I'm going to write about men currently dancing with the bata, then I should take a class dancing in the bata to understand how it moves more. Um, so it was a little bit more of like an investigative approach at first. And then I view the bata in some ways like a person. So over the years we've developed this friendship um, and getting to know it more on a personal level. So then not only how am I going to do the moves in the bata or how am I going to move the bata as my teachers have moved it, but now how do I move it and where what emotions do I have and what style of dancing do I have that I'm going to apport something new and different to this bata that suits me and fits my body. I think back often and fondly to when I was in Sevilla and I was doing Fulbright research for that year and I was studying with Camila Desma, as I said, and I'll never forget the class that we were all dancing and we got into, all of us as the students got into a little bit of a dispute um, over what the choreography was and how we were feeling in it. And she, with the most aggressive kind of love that I can imagine, I started crying because she was yelling, but it wasn't in an angry way. It was like a yelling out of love. And she was in my face um, yelling that I was spending way too much time thinking about what everybody else thought of me and whether that was other people in class or whether that was somebody else in the audience and what they might think. And she said, at the end of the day, you're going to be too worried being self-conscious, thinking about what others think of you, that everybody else is going to be doing their own thing and you're going to be standing in front of them like a clown. Um, and from that moment, we had so many further chats of her trying to help me, almost in the, like a motherly figure, or I call her my tia my aunt, um, her really trying to get me to believe in myself and whatever I was doing, whether it was in a bata cola or pants or my specific style of dancing, whatever, whatever I did it, to do it with a certain level of security and self-confidence and self-assuredness um, that this, was, this is me dancing and this is my style. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But I'm doing it for myself. Um, and that's what I really tried to do with the Bata de Cola as well. Of, I'm, not, I, I'm not here to impress you as an audience member. I'm here to dance and express myself. And if you get entertained by that, or if what I do touches you in some way and makes you feel something different inside and moving forward, then I've done my job as an artist correctly. <laughs> Thank you Ole Ole Flamenco for putting a spotlight on my career and the other flamencos in New York City. See you soon.